Hey, this is Bradley Chubb, and you're listening to The Snap. Hey, this is Cortland Sutton. Hey, this is Tim Patrick. And you're listening to The Snap, Snap with Sidney Jones on Broncos Podcast Network. Yeah! What's up, Broncos country? Welcome back to the Broncos Podcast Network and YouTube for this week's episode of The Snap. I'm your host, as always, Sidney Jones. We are now just two days away until the Broncos are back at Empower Field at Mile High for their home opener on Sunday versus the Houston Texans. So let's welcome ESPN's Monday Night Football host, Susie Kalber, onto the show to discuss the Broncos' performance on Monday night in Seattle as they look to bounce back and get their first win at home this weekend. Susie, thank you so much for joining me today. Hi, Sydney. Great to be with you. Yeah, how are you doing? Gearing up for another week of Monday Night Football? Yeah, it's funny. When the season gets going... You better not have any other projects going on in your life because it just right. just seems to roll. So I I took a red eye back from Seattle and then all of a sudden it's Thursday, it seems, with <laughs> right. a work and it just that's sort of our saying during the season. It's Thursday again. Again and already? You're yeah. already you're digging back in. And of course, you know, now, you know, just a few days away too from our first ever double header on Monday night football where the games are actually going on at the same time. We haven't done this before. So this yeah. Monday night, whole new adventure for us. Yeah. What is Monday night going to look like for you guys then? Since, you know, like you mentioned, it is the first time you guys are doing this double header. Right. So our pregame show Monday night countdown is typically on the road in the stadium. Mm -hmm. Last week we were out with the fans beforehand and then moved inside so just because of all of the logistics and all of the moving parts, they're going to have us in our studios in New York City. Mm -hmm. So we do three games. The, our first game kicks at 7.15, so we're starting an hour earlier. So our pregame starts at 5 p.m. Eastern time. We mm -hmm. go till 7, first game kicks. We have that halftime coming up. And then the other, we have another pregame for the second game, which is Vikings-Eagles, that will mm -hmm. be on ABC. So we do a short pregame into that and then another halftime. But the league has really been insistent, too, that they want the fans to get as much live action as possible. So while, of course, fans can choose which game they want to go to at any time, right. we're going to uh, not only a ton of cut-ins, but even in our halftimes, a lot of live look-ins to the other games. But it's something we've never done. And, you know, we, we love when the bar is raised and there's an additional challenge. So that's <laughs> For this Monday night. Absolutely. That sounds like a fun one, a jam-packed night for you guys. Yes. Well, let's look at this past Monday night game. You guys were in Seattle for the Broncos Seahawks game. I mean, what a wild game to kick off this season of Monday night football. It was. And, you know, those are the kind of games that especially, well, I mean, in general for the game too, but for the pregame, when we really have some like great meat on the bone and something to dive into and something that really builds the excitement. And of course the biggest question was how's the crowd going to react to Russell Wilson. And, and I think in his heart, Russell was a little bit maybe nervous and concerned about that too. And, and, you know, he, he talked about just the love he has for the city and the history and all of that. Absolutely. And I agreed with, you know, all of his former teammates that for everything he did for that organization, there really shouldn't have been anything but tears. And it's kind of, you know, it's kind of funny how Pete Carroll egged the fans on to, to you know, show emotion and it's all about competition. And he put, you know, whether they were going to boo or cheer and there, right. just it added to that whole extra element of emotion and I thought I thought Russell handled everything really well and he had a solid game he it did wasn't like, like yeah. he had a solid yeah. game and the offense you know everybody all anybody wanted to focus on was you know the very end and how things went but if you really looked at what the offense did with all those new moving parts and not having played a single snap live and just the new scheme for the offensive line it really did play well so I, I would imagine for Broncos fans, there's really high hopes, but you know, it's um, being a head coach is n not only a real challenge, but head coach and play caller, mm -hmm. you know, ask, ask anybody around the league. I mean, that's one of the toughest challenges. And so Nathaniel Hackett now understands speed of the game. Isn't just about, you know, rookie players. It's also right. for rookie head coaches and, and, uh, 
I, I'm sure, I'm sure when they're faced with a situation like that next time will be completely different. Yes, definitely. And they both said that this week during press conferences too. And it was interesting, you know, they both talked about how that communication was together, Coach Hackett and Russell Wilson, and they said it, it felt like they'd been calling the games together for years, which was great to hear, you know, first game out. Well, clearly they have great chemistry together. Oh yeah. And the offense has been such a collaboration for the two of them. But again, you can do all the, as, as coach talks about that, he prefers 11 on 11 in practice rather than seven on seven. So they can get true timing. But mm-hmm. even with that, it's just really hard to simulate game conditions and how that's going to feel. So again, that's something else that really bodes well, that they both, they felt so comfortable under real game conditions. And I just think there'll be, a, you know, there'll be a lot of exciting stuff to watch for Broncos fans because it still remains a little bit of a mystery, just exactly what this offense looks like, how much of it is the old Russell and how much is the new Russell and as all that unfolds, but yeah, they should likely be able to hang in that tough AFC list. Absolutely. I hope you're right. You know, Susie, you mentioned it. Obviously, this wasn't the outcome the Broncos had hoped for, but they did the offense. They moved the ball really well, you know, both on the ground and through the year. But, you know, they had a lot of mistakes on really both sides of the ball. A couple fumbles there in the red zone, a lot of penalties. How do you think maybe the Broncos address some of these issues moving forward into this weekend? Yeah, well, I mean, those are the type of things. It's only week one and your team didn't take any snaps in the preseason. And talking to coaches beforehand, I think they were really torn. They were torn about that to play or not to play. And that's really tough. And it's one of those cases where when there are things you can control and you can control whether players are not going to get hurt because they're not playing. They, They felt like they had had a lot of really good live snaps because of the joint practices with Dallas. Like they felt like they had done enough of that. But right up until... The day before, I think Coach Hackett was still sort of torn about whether he should have been playing his guys or not playing his guys. Mm-hmm. But for so many teams now, the early part of the season is like is like training camp. Training like camp. Yeah. So give them the first quarter of the season to really get in a groove and get things rolling, and and I'm sure they'll get a lot of those those things addressed. But you know, one of one of my favorite players that uh, that I talked to leading up to the game was Bradley Chubb. And he had such a great game. And again, you know, like he said, in in this new defensive scheme, it's just so much more emphasis on the edge and playing freer and getting after the quarterback. And he had a great game. And it was great to see Randy Gregory back in action. I just think there's so many really good things to look forward to. I I wouldn't put a ton, ton of weight in week one. Yeah, I'm with you there. It was so, so fun to see Bradley Chubb and Randy Gregory out there. I know we've been waiting what feels like forever for, to see that pass rush duo out there together. But Susie, you know, you kind of mentioned it earlier, not being able to have those live game reps in the preseason. I feel like we saw that on defense a little bit in the first half, maybe looked a little rusty out there, but they made adjustments at halftime. We heard from Kareem Jackson this week, and he said that there was just an issue of communication, and they all came out in the second half looking like a new unit held the Seahawks to just 34 yards. You got, you mentioned Randy Gregory and Bradley Chubb, but what else about this defense really excites you, you know, as they came into their true form later in that game? Yeah, I think the whole idea of, of being more aggressive and really getting after it so the guys can play free, and you know it's just such a solid secondary and – had that big pass rush up front. I mean, they clearly they have all the pieces. And yeah, it's just a matter of just getting into getting into a rhythm with the system. Absolutely. Well, like you said, a lot to look forward to this season. The Broncos will look to get that first win at home on Sunday. Susie, appreciate your thoughts on the team, but want to switch gears for a couple minutes now. You know, as many of my listeners know here on the snap, one of my main goals is to highlight some of the most prominent and dominant women in the NFL, and you certainly fit that category. You know, Susie, you originally joined ESPN back in 1993, and you're a mainstay, you know, of the company's NFL coverage. So can you just walk me through your path that you took to get to where you are today? We would need a, we would need <laughs> in 15, 10 to 15 minutes to do that. But I think one of the things that I'm most proud of 
is that a big chunk of the whole beginning of my career was spent behind the scenes as a producer and really learning all of the dis different aspects of the job. And that's mm -hmm. what whenever I'm mentoring people who are trying to get into the business, that's what I usually talk about first is versatility is key. And I think that's why I've been able to maintain longevity throughout my career because I've been able to do a lot of different things. I, I, I was a producer and I was a reporter and I really loved that and the whole creative aspect of, of putting pieces together and then being able to, to anchor, you know, lens a whole different other area. And I did sidelines for 10 years, which is probably my favorite thing I've done in my career to actually be on the sideline. But then to be able to do a variety of all of those different things, host different types of events, but also report, do sidelines. I think I think that whole combination is really sort of a key to success and, and being willing to not think that you're just going to jump on the air initially, you know, that right. it, it takes time and it takes legwork and, mm -hmm. and it's worth it to sort of put the time into, to learn all those different aspects of the business. Well, with your role at, you know, ESPN now, I know every day probably looks very different, especially during this season, but you know, what does your kind of day to day or, you know, workflow look like throughout the season now? Yeah, the um, the weeks um, go by pretty quickly. Once the season starts, we yeah. joke, you know, initially it seems like a long season. But once once week one kicks off, like it is like a giant snowball thing downhill, you know, and right. you're either running really fast. You're going to get crushed. <laughs> by. Oh, so the weeks go fast and. You know, Tuesday is really the only day is I'm typically, you know, flying home. I review the last week's show. We spend a lot of time reviewing, always seeing what we can do better, set the standard higher. And then it's Wednesday, a whole series of research and notes come out. And I'm, I'm digging into as much different types of stuff that I can read to then prepare for what's the most important, which is actually talking to people. And that's how you're truly accurate. You get things right is getting coaches and players on the phone, whether that be in our organ, our formal production meetings or on the side ourselves. So kind of putting all of those different notes together. And I have, I've always done this. I have notebooks with tabs. I'm sort of the old school and everything I could want for my broadcast is on just a few neat little sheets. So I have it at my fingertips for a Monday night. And we, we typically hit the road either on a Saturday or a Sunday, and depending on when our meetings and calls are, and mm -hmm. we, we arrive in the city and then it's, you know, really diving into a full Sunday slate because a lot of our show is also review of the past week. So trying to stay on top of a little bit of what everybody's doing. Mm -hmm. And then it, I spend quite a bit of time writing because I take every line of our rundown and I, I write it all. I sort of massage each thing. And we have meetings early on Monday morning to sort of fine tune the games we'll be talking about. In addition yeah. to the Monday night game, we meet with our whole crew of guys that afternoon. And then we head to the stadium and show kicks off at 6 p.m. Eastern each week. Well, Susie, I know you've worked, you know, so many incredible events over the years. Super Bowls, you know, NFL drafts. I think I saw X Games, some NASCAR game or races. You know, the list goes on. What was maybe your favorite event or game that you've ever covered throughout your career? Well, I'd say in terms of, of big events, the the X Games was really kind of my <sighs> baby because when it, back when it was originally called the Extreme Games, one of the things on my resume when I came to ESPN was me participating in all those types of alternative sports. I really loved uh -huh. that. And they saw that on my resume. And when the whole concept of the X Games came up, they actually asked me to go do the demo tape of that up in, oh, wow. in Rhode, Rhode, Rhode Island. And as it turned out, some of the scripts, like I felt like I knew some of the sports better than what the script said. And we threw the script out and we, we taped this this demo for advertisers and needless to say they liked it and it was a hit and i've i've always been a, a huge fan of the olympics too in addition to the alternative sports so being able to host you know the whole original broadcast of of the x games and being involved in that that will always be a favorite experience of mine yeah. being at the grassroots of that but i'd say as as a single game 
just like a player, they dream of their Super Bowl. I got my Super Bowl in, in 06, the Steelers and the mm-hmm. Seahawks. And my sideline was the Seahawks sideline. Mike Holmgren gave me amazing access to the team all week. Yeah. Before the game, he allowed me to be in the tunnel before they ran out. I used his comments in my pre-kick hit. And then the game just sort of came to me, whether you know it was some controversial calls that Mike Holmgren was upset about or just mm-hmm. different things that were happening on the sideline. I really had an opportunity to, to, to participate in in the show yeah and and afterward the the great john madden made a comment of like that's how you do sideline oh wow incredible as yeah and and anytime you can be standing on the field when the confetti falls and just to to feel the electricity and the excitement of all of it yeah that will that will always stand out that's incredible yep super bowl's on my list too as i'm sure it's every on everyone's list Well, Susie, just a couple more here for you. You know, throughout your career, throughout, you know, this journey, getting to where you are right now, what were some of the challenges that you faced in this industry? Well, I would say that I think people typically expect, especially as a woman starting when I did in this business, you know, that there would be more challenges regarding that. But I will say this, that when I first got into the business and I mentioned getting in as a producer and You know, I was at press conferences. I went to the University of Miami and that's where I was a producer and I got my start. It was a great sports market and Miami Hurricanes were in championship, national championships. And and I remember being at national championship press conferences with 250 people in the room and Mm -hmm. I was the only woman, but I sat up front in the middle, which I think I've done my entire career and asked the first question. I think because I felt like I felt like I belonged. It, it yeah. was, I loved sports since I was a little kid and especially the NFL. Mm-hmm. And I, it, it just felt natural and very genuine. And I think the audience has always recognized that. And then just because of the, the level of preparation that I've always done, I, whatever sport I'm covering, I respect that sport. I respect the athletes. So then in turn, I feel like they've respected me back. So I think a lot of the challenges people would typically think of, you know, for a woman who's in a man's world, I never really felt like that was something I had to overcome. I I always felt very, very comfortable in the role. That's very wonderful to hear, Susie. You know, as we sign off here, I always like to end the show giving advice to, you know, the younger generation. What's one piece of advice you'd give someone looking to get into the industry now, you know, no matter what area of it they really want to work in? Yeah, I would say, and, and you know this by now, that if you're looking for glamour, that's probably, this is probably yeah. not the avenue because it's a mm-hmm. ton of hard work and a ton of, of personal sacrifice in a lot of ways. Yes, yes. it's an awesome job. And we love the heck out of it, but you need to be willing to work harder than anybody else. And I got this advice before my career started was, you know, if you are willing to work harder than anybody else and you have talent, you'll find a spot in this business. Absolutely. You really will, but you, you need to be willing to, to really do the hard work and, and have a genuine passion for it. It shouldn't be about, I want to be on TV. It should be I love sports. I love the NFL. That's why I want to do it. And that will come through. Yep. Couldn't agree more. Well, Susie, I truly, truly can't thank you enough for your time today. And it was such a pleasure getting to know you and having you on the podcast. This was great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good luck on Monday night too. Thank you. Well, that's all the time we have for this week's episode. Broncos Country, thanks so much for tuning in. And make sure to meet me right back here on the Broncos Podcast Network and YouTube next Friday for another episode. I'll see you all then.